Hello and welcome to Impera Project, a project built on a dream. It has been a while since we've last heard of each other. We are glad to be talking to you once again. We would apologize for our lack of communication and content lately, but we prefer to thank you for hanging around. Unfortunately, problems both in our personal life and in the internal affairs of Impera Project kept us away. But nonetheless, we are here once again with a new video. Today we are going to dive again into the Stoic philosophy in an attempt to answer one of the most controversial questions that have been raising troubles in the minds of common folk, probably since ancient times. We think this question arouses your curiosity in your minds as well. Curiosity in the happiest of cases, in the worst, frustration. Why does it seem that bad things happen only to good people? That is the troublesome question. But before we start this video, we would appreciate it if you press the subscribe button, turn on the notifications, leave a like and a share to spread the word. Thank you very much for watching and we hope you are going to enjoy this video. Why does it seem that bad things happen only to good people? It is indeed so, or is it just a trick of the mind? We shall discover this aspect by examining the works of Lucius Seneca. Usually Seneca always tries to explain this kind of inner workings of the world. He tries in his works to break apart these mundane feelings which is something that not many philosophers spend their time doing. That's why we recommend checking Seneca anytime you have a problem, especially one of these common recurrent urban thoughts. In his book De Providentia about Providence, Seneca can be found explaining to his friend Lucilius probably the same Lucilius which can be found in most of his letters, exactly this question, and also trying to formally express the existence of a so-called providence. But firstly, what is providence? It is a pretty strange concept, which can be a little bit confusing at times. The first definition found on Google is the protective care of God or of nature as a spiritual power. But that doesn't seem nearly enough to explain the concept. We believe that Seneca obviously referred to the Roman understanding of Providentia, which is even more abstract. On Wikipedia it is defined as such. In ancient Roman religion, Providentia is a divine personification of the ability to foresee and make provision. She was among the embodiments of virtues that were part of the imperial cult of ancient Rome. Providentia does figures in art, cult and literature, but has little or no mythology as such. In Cicero's vision, Providentia, the ability to foresee future, is a part of Prudentia, the ability to understand which things are benefic, which are harmful, and which are neither. Together with Memoria, the ability to store information and reproduce it, and Intelligentia, the ability to grasp different concepts. So actually, we believe that Seneca here was pleading the case of the existence of a supernatural power to properly understand and interpret correctly the will of the universe. And he was not talking about some divine intervention, even though he is often mentioning the God. But we will talk about this in another video. Let's focus on the matter at hand. Just as all philosophical works, or most of them belonging to the ancient times, De Providentia is organized as a dialogue between Seneca and Lucilius. It starts with the following paragraph. Why do bad things happen to good people? To a good man, nothing bad can happen. The obstacles never intervene. There are so many rivers, so many torrents of rainwater, which fall from the heights, and so many springs with purifying water. And yet, they never change the taste of the sea, and they do not even make it sweeter. Just the same, the waves of harsh conjunctures do not twist the soul of a strong man. On the same note, Seneca tries to explain to Lucilius that nothing in this universe happens by accident. Almost in a Kantian spirit, Seneca puts everything under the spell of a higher law that governs everything. Every single aspect in this universe is controlled by its own set of properly and permanently well-defined rules that apply individually. You've asked me, Lucilius, if Providentia really does exist, why do bad things happen to good men? Now, I believe it is of no use to prove how such a creation cannot endure without a supervisor, and that the movement of stars or their way in different directions does not belong to a random impulse, and that those that gain way by pure coincidence are often clouded and quickly they hit each other. This speed that knows no obstacle is under the rule of an eternal law, having control over an infinity of things in the sea, on the shore, 
an infinity of shiny lights which set themselves ablaze at regular intervals. Judging by these paragraphs alone, but also by those which follow in the first chapter, you can understand that Seneca wants to prove through logic and speculation that because everything is ruled by an eternal law, as he calls it, this means that the bad things that happen to a good man aren't actually bad but normal because nothing is arbitrary. Nobody should be angry because things do not go his or her way. Because after all, it is a stoic idea that one should never wish for things to happen in a certain manner. But on the contrary, one should always be ready to embrace anything that happens with open arms. Now you can understand why the Stoics believed that having this idea that things can happen and will happen only accordingly to their own set of rules. Events, people, the universe, everything happens under this eternal law, which one cannot comprehend. But that still doesn't answer our dilemma, so let's keep digging. Don't you see that fathers show their affection in a different fashion from the mothers? The fathers order their sons to be sent to study at an early age. And even in the days of the gods, they aren't allowed free time. They take from their sons both the sweat and the tears. When it comes to good people, the god shares the attitude of a father. It loves them manly and tells them you shall work, suffer through failures to obtain true power. Putting aside the god reference, which is not about a Greek god or about the Christian god, but rather it is a more abstract concept, which we will explain another time, Seneca wants to underline the idea that fate acts just like a harsh father who wants to see his son man up and become powerful and carry his legacy with pride. The idea is that one can only better himself by pushing through adversity, learning from mistakes. You can compare the spirit to a muscle. A muscle becomes stronger the more you train it, by lifting weights or running, very demanding activities. It is the same with the soul. It becomes stronger by training in the same way. Every battle is a weight, your soul is carrying weights as well. Comfort breeds ignorance and ignorance breeds vice. So in the end, the answer to the question above is not that fate gives good people bad things, but on the contrary, it gives them the opportunity to maintain that goodness and to further develop it. Like a father that trains his son to become stronger. They are not bad things per se. They just appear to be bad because they don't always check the list of things we consider to be good. But fate itself doesn't work in good and bad, but in need. When the road darkens, remember that fate is just testing you and bringing forward to the table opportunities to strengthen you and steer you away from vice. Thank you very much for watching our video. We hope you've enjoyed it and if so, don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe and we will gladly see you next time.